sometimes it's just easier to buy your lunch, right? It tastes better. Well, not always. And sometimes buying your lunch out can maybe not be so good for your health, depending on what you're getting. And also, it can that cost adds up. So making your own lunch is a great way to save money. It's also a great way to eat healthier because you're completely in control of what you're putting in your lunch. So if you don't believe me, watch this video for three really easy to follow lunchbox friendly recipes that will have your friends wanting to know where you got your lunch. Hi, my name is Sorsha. I'm a nutritionist and healthy lifestyle blogger from Ireland. And on this channel, I help make healthy living simple because it doesn't have to be complicated. If you'd like to make some improvements to your diet and just generally your relationship with food, then please click on the link below where you can avail of a free 30 minute Zoom call with me where we can discuss ways that you can make healthy changes whether you want to lose weight gain weight just eat health there it doesn't matter and also the link will also bring you to my full list of nutrition services first i want to talk a little bit about why do we eat if you ask somebody why do you eat they're probably going to say because i'm hungry but really think about it we have these set meal times. We have breakfast, lunch, dinner, supper. Are you always hungry at breakfast time? Are you always hungry at lunch or dinner time? I know sometimes I'm not, but because everybody around you is eating, you probably feel pressured to eat, or maybe you've just gotten used to eating at a certain time. So it's okay not to eat at lunch time. I'm not saying, fast the whole day like that's not okay <laughs> but you have to figure out when are you hungry some people are more hungry in the evenings than they are in the mornings and that's completely okay that's just the way you are it's you have to listen to your body your body will tell you what it needs and when it needs it so there's loads of different kind of lunchbox containers out there now that you can use. You've got these kind of ones where there's different compartments. They're great for kids because um, I know when I was younger, I didn't like my food touching each other. So it's great to keep them separate. You can put a bit of fruit, a bit of salad. You can put your wrap or your sandwich in there and they're airtight so they'll keep the food fresh. There's no need to wrap it in loads of cling foam or tin foil. Then you can also get just plain boxes like this that you would get from your takeaways. These are also great for if you're freezing food. So say you make a big batch of curry or a big batch of spaghetti bolognese and you, it's not all et. You can put it in one of these and label it, label it with the date and what's in it and stick it in the freezer. And then someday that you don't feel like cooking, you just take it out, heat it up and there you go. And then you've got these kind of containers. Now, you'd think they're only for soup, but you can use them for other things. Like when I was at college, I used to bring curry in this, and it, like, it would stay warm the full day. So they're really good, as long as you get a good quality one. And then obviously you can bring soup and things like that as well. So getting the right container is very important, depending on what kind of lunches you want. If you want to keep your lunch cool, you want it airtight, if you want to keep your lunch hot, you want thermal things. So it's very important that you get the right container for your food. Also storing food properly is really important if you want to avoid things like food poisoning. So think about that. So today we're going to make kind of like a aromatic duck pancake, except we're going to use chicken. So for this, all you need is some tortilla wraps. I'm using these seeded ones. You need some carrots, just peeled and chopped up into like, pieces. And you're going to need some cucumber, so I just have like the heart, the green, the skin, peeled off it and chopped up. And then you're also going to need some hoisin sauce. So I've got this one, but like, you can use whatever hoisin sauce. You're going to need some tin foil as well, and that is to wrap the tortilla wraps in and put them in the oven to heat them. So let's get started. 
So now we're going to put the hoisin sauce over the chicken. You need about two tablespoons of the hoisin sauce. Probably a good idea to open the lid. <laughs> Depending on how much chicken you have, you might need a bit more cuts and sauce to cover it all. And once the chicken is completely coated, you're going to put it in the oven, a uh, hot oven at 180 degrees for about 25 to 30 minutes. Now the tortilla wraps only need about 8 to 10 minutes in the oven, so we're just going to get them ready. You're going to take a good size piece of tin foil and then take how many wraps that you want. So. You're just going to place them in the middle of the tin foil and then you're just going to kind of wrap it up like, like a present. Now, the tin foil might not completely cover it. If it doesn't, then you're going to have to get another piece because otherwise your wrap is going to be like really hard and crusty. And you don't want that. You just want it to be nice and soft so that you can wrap it up easily. Now, when that's ready, you can put it in like 10 minutes near the end of the chicken so that everything will be ready and at the same time. So now that your chicken is cooked and your wraps are warm, oh, warm, <laughs> then you're going to put everything together. So I'm going to get out one of my wraps and when you're not using the wraps, close it up because otherwise they're going to go hard. So. Now you're going to get some poison sauce and you're going to spread some on the wrap. And now you're going to just spread it around. Now you're going to get some of your chicken and as you can see I have shredded up the chicken. So I'm going to shred it. Now you're going to get some carrots and some cucumber. You can put whatever you want. You can put um, onions. Or, or a bit more. You can put onions. You could put spinach. You could put watercress. Like you can experiment around. You can see what you like, and what you don't like. No. I apologize to any deli workers because this is probably not going to look very professional. Basically, you just wrap it up, fold the bottom, fold the top, and then roll it and push it down. Now, like, and you'll get that. So you can cut it in half, you can eat it straight away, you can Put it in the lunchbox. Now wait till it cools before you wrap it in the tin foil, otherwise it'll go all like soggy. Put it in your lunchbox, eat it the next day. So there we go. So today we're going to make a Mediterranean salad and all you need for that is one can of chickpeas drained and rinsed out. You need one tomato, some sesame seeds about a tablespoon or any kind of seeds at all sesame seeds sunflower seeds linseeds whatever uh, a bowl of salad leaves about 40 grams half a cucumber some balsamic vinegar or if you have a dressing that you like with, made up with olive oil and a tin of tuna so first we're going to prepare our tomatoes and our cucumber cucumber very simple just cut it into thin slices or thick slices, whichever you like. You can also get this thing called a spiralizer and it makes like spirals of the cucumber. It's really cool. 
you want to cut up the tomato, same thing, you can cut it whatever way you want. I'm going to cut mine nice and thin. So that's all your veg. Now we're going to go and we're going to toast the sesame seeds or whatever seeds you are using. All you need is a pan. You don't need any oil. You need a wooden spoon and your sesame seeds. You're going to heat the pan to medium to high heat. So heat the pan. And this will only take about like two minutes. And what it does is it kind of releases the flavor of the sesame seeds or if you're using sunflower seeds and it makes them like taste that nutty flavor instead of just putting them on raw because they don't really taste as nice when they're raw. So that's nearly warm. And then what you want to do is you're going to just spread them evenly on the pan like that. And you can put more. I'm only using a tablespoon because I'm only making one portion. But you can make more. And you're going to leave them like that until they start kind of popping. And once they start popping, you can shake them about a bit. And then all you do is take them off the pan and leave them to cool before you put them on the salad. We're ready to put it all together. So get yourself a big bowl and just basically throw everything in. So you've got your salad leaves, your tomatoes, cucumber, chickpeas, got your salmon, And this salad is full of protein from the chickpeas and the salmon and it's also full of like good omega-3 fatty acids and I need to strain the salmon or sorry tuna And your tuna. Also, like you're getting your fiber from your vegetables and your sesame seeds. So you're just gonna mix it up like that. And the final thing you do is put the dressing on. So if you are taking this for lunch, you would maybe take the dressing in a separate little container and put it on before you eat, eat it. If you're gonna eat it straight away, you can put the dressing on. Um, also then, you're just gonna sprinkle the seeds. Now these are cooled. And there you have it, a Mediterranean salad bowl. And that should keep you full. Also like, if you wanna put a little bit of bread, um, not breadsticks, croutons on top if you like more carbohydrate um, or you could have it with some rice you could mix up some rice with it um, eat it with pasta so it's just a great little lunch and it's simple to make and it's really tasty which is important now i'm going to make a really simple pasta salad this salad is just thrown together i like things to be really nice and colorful so all you're going to need is some cooked pasta. This is about one portion. Obviously, if you're making a large amount, you need more pasta. But once you've cooked the pasta, you rinse it in cold water and that'll stop it getting all sticky and clumping together. I've got some veg. Now these are left over from fajitas I made, but I've also added in some peas and some cherry tomatoes. Once again, you can add in any veg you want. It's completely up to you. I've also got a lemon and some natural yogurt, mayonnaise, 
and Dijon mustard, and this is to make the dress. So first, you've got your pasta. You're going to put in as much vegetables as you want. So, so. Throw them in there. Now I may as well put it all in. <laughs> And you're just going to mix that up. Right for the dressing, so I'm just going to put that to the side. And I've got a little bowl here. And I'm going to put two tablespoons of this yogurt in. You could also use Greek yogurt, it would be thicker. slightly thicker but I'm just using natural yogurt. Now you're going to get your lemon and you squeeze half the lemon. So you're going to get your tablespoon of mayonnaise. So mix it all in. And now I'm going to get a teaspoon of Dijon mustard. And you're just going to mix that all together. Now it is time to just put it on your salad. So you could also, if you're bringing this for lunch, you would put the pasta salad in a lunchbox and store it in the fridge. And you could store this separate. And then when you're ready to eat it, you would put it on. Just mix, mix, mix. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed the recipes. If you did, comment below, tell me what you thought of them. Did you make any changes to them? Also, if you like this video, please hit the like and subscribe button and the wee notification bell so you'll be notified when I upload any more videos. Bye.